Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Yarn Flakes podcast. My name is Audrey and this is a Nitty Yarny podcast from the southwest of France. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me for this new episode. I hope you're all doing very well. Um, I am. I have uh, quite a few things to share with you, so I'm not gonna linger on too much. Uh, but yeah, I have a pattern release to announce for a collaboration that I'm very uh, excited about. I uh, also have two other finished uh, projects to quickly share with you because they have they both have uh, dedicated videos so to say on the channel so yeah I will just quickly uh, show them to you um, I will also be sharing two new works in progress one is new and finally 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 yes I will be showing you a bunch of pretty yarn that I got recently because I went to a yarn festival in the southwest of France um, recently. So I may or may not have bought way too much yarn. Um, so yes, I am going to start right away. Um, you can find timestamps to all the different sections of the podcast in the description down below. So if you want to skip anything, please feel free to look at that and jump ahead. I also put links to everything that I talk about as well as my social media and patterns for sale on Ravelry. And yeah, before you all ask, I am wearing this. This is like a, a big stall that I weaved uh, with uh, leftovers of sock yarns. It's big and it's cold, so that's why I have this here. And this is like a store-bought thing, so <laughs> nothing to say about this. Uh, I do believe I showed this on the podcast uh, when I made it quite a while ago. Um, but yeah, I'm going to start right away with a new design that I just published on uh, Ravelry uh, and Payhip. And it is the Kyriel Stall. So... It is a lace and textured stall or scarf that is knit with two skeins of fingering weight yarn. And so the thing with this is that you start by knitting this here, this lace and textured section. So it's a fairly simple yet lace, it just has some decreases, some um, yarn overs and here is a slipped stitch ribbing bit. Once you have knit the border the lace merges into stockinette so it's a little bit more mindless and simple um, and you basically knit until you reach the mid middle half of the uh, stool or until you have, you have used half of your yarn. So this stool is really great to adapt to whatever yarn quantity you have, however big you want it. It's really, really easy to adapt. And so once you've knitted one half, you start over the other way and you need the other half. This also makes it like a very portable project. This, like, the, this way you don't have like the whole project on your needles all the time and so if you need to take it with you places or anything it's much more easy to do so and same thing basically you knit until you finish your yarn and then once you have the two halves of the design you graft them together using a Russian grafting and the Russian grafting is a really easy grafting method you use a crochet hook basically and it's not sewing like the Kitchener stitch. You basically, you bind off the stitches in sort of a twisted way together. And so you end up with a little small textured line. And this means uh, that you can use two colors. So you can check my testers version. Some of them have made one half in one color and the other half in another color. So if you want to have like a color block thingy, uh, this can be quite fun. Coughing again. <laughs> I've been talking too much today. This is the fourth video I record. But yeah, 
Um, so this is a really, really easy project. I wanted more of a mindless, accessible, um, subtle sort of accessory. And so this is it. And it's really simple lace knitting. Uh, if you're a beginner, that's perfectly fine. If you just put markers in between the repeats so that when you uh, finish a section, you can check that you're on the right spot. And it's just really, really easy to knit. And I have, uh, the pattern was created in collaboration with Le Fil de Sidonie, which is a French uh, dyer, and her Merino Nylon Alpaca, alpaca <laughs> base. And it's a blend that I really like. I haven't seen it much, but like any alpaca blends, yeah, I think <laughs> alpaca blended with wool, with sheep wool, it's sort of like my, my favorite sort of thing because you get the best of both worlds basically you have the bounciness of the wool the memory uh, the structure of it and then you have the halo and the drape of the alpaca and with this one you also have the strength of the nylon if you um, don't mind the plastic uh, synthetic fiber but this means that this yarn is very very versatile it has a great stitch definition but it has a beautiful drape. It has this cute halo. It's really, really good. I um, I really, really like this blend. And uh, so, Le Fil de Sidonie, she has uh, kits available for sale on her uh, shop. I'm not sure if she delivers worldwide. Um, <laughs> I have to check upon that. Um, but yeah, she made a bunch of different colorways for the autumn, for the stall, and this is one of them, and it's absolutely lovely. It has these, like, nuances of grey and these really crisp speckles of burgundy, fuchsia, and charcoal grey. Really, really pretty. And I'm really happy because it was quite tough finding the right texture, the right lace for it, because you don't want to um, damage the speckles, you don't want to damage the lace. And I find that this uh, this works quite well. Yeah. And uh, it's a really easy, quick project. Um, I really like the fact that just the borders are knit knitted with lace because it's like it's a little bit more uh, subtle this way. And uh, I think it makes it a bit more uh, easy to wear, in my opinion. So yeah, a really, really simple stall. The first of the uh, full designs, so to say. But yeah, you have on the borders, you have a little repeat of the slip stitch motif. Um, yeah, if you like the design, um, it is now available uh, on all of my uh, pattern stores and there is 15% off uh, for the release uh, with the code Kiriel, which is the name of the store. So until this Sunday, it is 15% off on Ravelry and on Payhip it's always going to be at a little discount because on Payhip you have a pay what works system. So if you need a pattern a little bit more affordable you can go there or if you um if you would like to support me <laughs> extra you can change the price on payhip but um yeah that is it for the new design reviews i really hope you like it i wanted a more not simple but like fresh looking design <laughs> because like it still has some texture but it's not all over so it has some changes a little bit um but i wanted something a little bit smooth to enter autumn basically and um yeah hope you like it <laughs> um that's it for the pattern release for this time and yeah i am going to quickly talk about the page of one mystery in it along so um, if you don't know, I was hosting a mystery cowl, so a mystery knit along, where we were knitting the Page of Wands cowl, which was a colorwork cowl based on uh, tarot cards. So 
the mystery knit along is now finished. So the pattern is available uh, as a complete normal design on Ravelry and Payhip and Lovecrafts. So I will put the link to the design in the description down below. So if you want to see the whole pattern and have all the details on it, yeah, they are now available there. Um, I have made a video, a separate video, which uh, you may have seen, um, where I reveal the entire cowl and where I go one motif after the other. Basically, in my latest podcast, I did that for the first clue. I shared the drawings that I made in the cowl, in the knitting, and um, I also showed you some tarot cards that were of these, uh, the same interpretation. Um, and yeah, I didn't want to do it <laughs> entirely uh, because it uh, it's long, <laughs> but uh, yeah, a lot of people ask that I do. So I made up, I made this video and it presents to you the entire cowl so you can see everything, every little motif in the cowl I present and I, um, I explain why I chose this drawing and I also show you some of my uh, tarot deck collection. So not all of the decks fitted in, <laughs> in the video. So yeah, it says something. But um, yeah, if you're interested in tarot at all, or if you, uh, yeah, you're curious, uh, basically the decks that I show, they're all created, almost all of them are created by independent artists. So that's kind of nice. And yeah, there's a ton of different styles in it. And most importantly, you can see all the design, basically. So I'm going to show the cow now. So if you're still following the mystery, um, or you don't want to reveal everything, just don't look because I'm going to show it now. I'm not going to show it into detail, but I'm still going to show it without hiding some motifs. So this is it. The Page of Wands mystery cowl is this one. So yeah, it's a tube cowl with the motif. And as you can see, you have the bands for each card, basically. So yeah, if you want um, to see the video, it will um, reveal anything, so there won't be any more secret. Um, but also in the pattern pictures, so if you go to the Ravelry or Payhip page of the pattern, the pictures that I have taken of the complete design, I made sure that you could see every motif in it, so that there's no surprise, basically. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so... That is it. Um, you can check the, the versions of the people who were knitting it during the mystery knit along uh, because it looks so different depending on the colors that you use. You can choose a very autumnal combo like I did. You can have something a little bit more subtle with darker colors or pastel -y, uh, less contrast basically. Some people use variegated yarns or they, or they made a gradient which looks really cool as well. And uh, yeah, there are tons of different versions that you can see. And um, yeah, uh, so it's a tube cow. And what I really like about tube cow is that they're, they're plump enough that you can wear them like this and they're already uh, warm and like kind of close to the neck. But obviously you can wrap it um, twice around your neck and have something that's a little bit more uh, warm for the winter. And yeah, mine is knit with knitting for olive merino. So um, any fingering way it works, uh, any that you like, basically. And um, yeah, it's a, uh, it's not complicated. I had some beginners knitting the cowl as part of the mystery knit along, beginners in color work, and they did great. Basically, the thing is, since you just knit in the round, you don't do any shaping, and well, it's just knitting, basically. Um, it's even if the motifs themselves aren't super easy, um, it's nothing complicated to to follow. You just have to be attentive for the small portion of the motif. You know, you can really break it down into all the different bands, and that way um, it's easy to follow. So, yeah.
that's how it looks like. Um, I'm very happy uh, about how everything went. I really, really enjoyed making the mystery knit along and I do believe that I will make it um, a yearly event. So I have a little idea maybe for next year. So we'll see. But yeah, if you like the design, it is now available uh, on its own as just a standard design. Um, if you fancy having some color work at the moment. Um, but yeah, and you can check out the dedicated video if you're into that. Um, since we are talking about other videos, um, my next finished project is the shawl that I knitted in my project focus video. So if you haven't seen it, I have released a new project focus. So the project focus videos, they're vlogs basically, uh, where I share um, just snippets of my dogs uh, and, and where I uh, follow along the creation of one particular project. So I choose a, a pattern that I want to make and I, and I just knit that and uh, give my thoughts and some tips maybe and how um, show you how the progress of it uh, is. And so in the latest project focus, I did the Bloom Your Heart Out shawl, which is this gorgeous, gorgeous textured lace shawl. And it's a design by Inez Sang. And yeah, so if you want to see more of this um, this project, there is the video especially for that. So it's more of a vlog. Uh, but you can like skip to the parts where I talk so you can uh, hear more about the the, the knitting itself. Uh, but yeah, it's a big, big shawl and it's really, really beautiful. I'm showing you the wrong side, aren't I? Yeah. Here's the bubbles. There you go. Much better. <laughs> Um, so yeah, these are all the projects that I have to show you finished and I have two works in progress. That's four, two works in progress um, to share. The first one is the Kulm sweater, which is a, a project that I've been knitting on for quite a while now. I feel like every year I have a project that is just taking longer and that is just dragging over several months because it's usually a bit more intense or because I keep casting on other things. Um, and I think, so this year it's the cone sweater, which is a design by Fiona Alice, which was published by Brooklyn Tweed. And I've talked about this enough already, but basically it's a bottom up drop shoulder sweater with some V shaping. So it increases around the busts and it's uh, a lot of moss stitch with at the center this texture panel. Yeah. Um, I'm happy that I finished the body, yay! <laughs> so um, I finished both fronts and backs. You do a three needle bind off for the shoulder and um, there's a little nifty thing here is that you have more stitches on the front than you have on the back. So when you do the three needle bind off, you kind of have to absorb the front stitches here at the edge. So it kind of looks like um, a little um, gathers basically, but it's the ribbing. So it just works well and it looks really neat, I find. It just makes it really taper here. And I find that cute. And I started one sleeve, so yeah, you pick up a lot of stitches, you work this little eyelet motif and then it's small stitch again with some very rapid decreases. I think I almost finish all the decreases, then I will have a little bit more to knit before the cuff. And um, yeah, I really, really want to finish that sweater because I think it's gonna look really good. I um, I'm really eager to see it finished. I, <clears throat> sorry, um, I don't know if I'm going to make it to the end of the video. Uh, I, um, it sounds like I've been on a concert, like which I wish, but <laughs> no, I just record videos. Um, 
but yeah, I think it's gonna look really good. I absolutely adore this color. So this yarn is Les Petites Potions, which is a French indie dyer. She's, it's Deborah. She's, uh, she lives near me. She's like a sort of a friend, I guess. <laughs> but uh, she, um, I, I say that because I, I don't know. I consider her my friend. I don't know if she considers me her friend, but <laughs> um, this is her sock base. So it's merino nylon. And it's her Amand Grillé, so Toasted Almond uh, colorway, and it's a gorgeous rust. Now, Les Petites Potions, her yarn brand, I think that her specialty is having this really rich, saturated colors. Um, they're so, so deep. I have some more of her yarn to show you uh, later. But it's just, her colors aren't really nuanced in the sense that it does not vary in intensity, but it has some reflections. If you look at it, it has some, it, it sort of looks more golden in some parts, more brown in others. And it's not because the color is lighter or darker. So it's not a saturation thing. Um, so yeah, I just think that her colors are really rich and beautiful. And I really, really like this one in particular. And I think it's going to make a gorgeous sweater. So um, I think I'm going to try and finish it <laughs> in, a, in a not too uh, distant future. Um, but yeah, um, really smooth going project. Uh, you do need to um, know what you're doing a little bit because um, of how the Brooklyn Tweed patterns are laid out. But um, it's fairly easy still and yeah moving on to my next work in progress uh, which is a new design a design that i have drawn ooh, ages ago <laughs> um i have made um the chart for it like over a year ago it's another cow this is the neck um episode um i wanted to make a textured cables uh, car cowl basically and so um i finally started knitting on it and so i'm gonna try to show you it's gonna be a tube cowl again because i really like those um and yeah this is what it looks like so it features these cables here these are the main ones the simple little twisted cables it features these ones here which are the sort of zigzaggy ones, the simple four stitch cable. And then uh, yeah, you have the zigzag one repeating here. And then the big one, it's that one, which is uh, a Japanese sort of cable with the fake eyelet cables in the center. And uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to <laughs> advance on it. I have made something because I drew I drew the charts a while ago, but I didn't uh, set them up in instructions. So um, I'm gonna try in the pattern to indicate the repeats differently because so you repeat these ones, right? And I can't make a full chart the whole width of the cowl because it's going to be too long and it's not going to show well on uh, paper or on screens. Um, so what I did is that I indicated the repeats in the chart, but I know that this causes issues. I know a lot of people aren't used to how repeats are shown in charts and I know a lot of people tend to skip <laughs> reading the instructions where it explains how to do so. But I thought it would be a good idea to use the markers. So what I did is that I showed the markers on the chart. Basically, I decided to put a gray column of stitches in, of not stitches, basically a gray column in the chart that represents the marker. This way, when you're like knitting this and you're like repeat, you see that the chart says it, it, it indicates a repeat and then it has a gray column. So you just know you need to do this until the marker 
And then once you reach the marker and you have the two clues, you have the actual physical markers and the visible marker on the chart, then you move on to the next one. So this makes it a bit easier for me. I am see how it works <laughs> with testers. Um, I should start the testing soon for this because I, I want to release it in November. Testers won't have to uh, finish the cow, obviously, <laughs> just make like a couple of repeats um, of the motif to check that the, the instructions are accurate. But um, yeah, it's just... I really, really like this big cable here. And I can't wait to do more because I think it's going to look really like something once there's going to be several repeat. But um, yeah, I'm using Filcolana Arweta, which is a simple sock yarn from this Danish brand, Filcolana, uh, which is a really good, super soft sock yarn. It's 80-20, super wash merino nylon. And yeah, if you're looking for an affordable... Um, fingering weight yarn, I highly recommend that you check Filcolana Arweta. If you have access to it, um, I, I suppose it's mostly European. Um, but if you're in the States, you have Nits Nitplix uh, available. So what are you <laughs> even looking for something else? Um, but uh, yeah, um, this is a really, really soft one. They have a gorgeous um, color palette. It's really, really good. And it shows textures yeah so the cowl basically um like this is one half of the cowl and this is gonna be the other side of the tube um so you have some cables on the other side as well so that when you wear the cowl and it like flips around you you still have some of the nice motif everywhere and that way it's also a little bit more uh, fun to knit um, yeah so that is the project I'm working on at the moment uh, and can't wait to make it grow um, I think I'm finished with my projects so that is all I've been working on at the moment now the yarn show <laughs> So I have quite a lot of yarn to show you um, and I'm going to start with the one that is a bit uh, apart from the others. Um, a few weeks ago, um, Yasmin, which is the owner of Laine des Îles, which is a, a French-based um, yarn shop, uh, she's a retailer for a lot of amazing woolly yarns like Snaildan, uh, Hillesvag, um, she has a lot of British yarn brands as well um, she has a really, really she has took a wool she has a really really great collection I really adore her her selection it's one of my favorite online shops and so I was extremely happy when I saw that she was launching her own yarn range so she very kindly sent me a couple of skeins to test to 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 see um, so I could share them and I am so, so happy <laughs> that this exists. So this is Penin, the first yarn from Lendezil. And she sent me a skein of this, which is the Fuck colorway. Oh, Seal colorway. <laughs> this is how we say seal in French. And yes, it sort of sounds like the F word, but that's it. Um, and she also sent me uh, the colorway called Oyster, which is uh, like a more uh, soft pearl gray. Um, this is a DK weight. So first of all, yes, I really like that we have more DK weight option. And this is 100% BFL. It's the softest BFL I have ever ever seen it's like so plump and squishy when i touched it i thought i thought it was merino i thought it was just non super wash worsted span merino it is so so squishy so soft um but no it's bfl <laughs> so absolutely great well bfl is soft but i really got the conf i really got confused because it is not as dry 
uh, what I usually get from BFL. And I absolutely love this. So it's a really round, super twisted thread. It's gonna show textures gorgeously. And it has the shine uh, of BFL, the drape and the little halo. Absolutely beautiful. And so she sent me one of those and I ordered another one when she launched the yarn because I want to make like a cabled accessory with it. I don't know what yet, but, uh, but yeah. Um, <laughs> so really, really like this yarn. Um, and it's really affordable too. It's around 10 euros a skin. I think it's a bit less. Um, and so, yeah, it's kind of hard to get decay away because um, obviously hand dye decay is quite expensive. And if you go to sweater quantities, it's like, um, it, it's quite a, a cost. So I'm really happy to see a decay weight that's so affordable and such a stunning yarn. Um, so they have a range of natural colors and then they dye it as well. This says that the dye is uh, goat certified, so organic. And so that's kind of cool as well. So really, really beautifully made. I'm so, so happy for uh, Lendezil that they have this, <laughs> this really beautiful uh, product that they now have in their range. And um, if you're on the hunt for Decay Way, I highly recommend that you check it out because it's absolutely lovely. Um, so yeah. Now for the drama. Because a um, couple of weeks ago, there was a yarn festival in the southwest of France, which uh, was the Wool End Festival, the Wool End Music. It's kind of the only yarn festival that is happening at the moment because everything else is um, being cancelled, obviously. So I'm really happy that this one happened and... Voila! So, <laughs> there you go. I usually don't uh, just show everything that I get, but at the moment it's just quite hard for uh, yarn dyers and independent. The yarn sort of festivals are getting cancelled one after the other. Um, it's, yeah, it's a bit difficult. Um, so I thought it was the opportunity to showcase some beautiful, beautiful uh, makers that are so very talented. So that is what I'm going to do. So the Woolen Festival, it happened in the middle of September. I was very lucky to go with Deborah from Les Petites Potions, so the dyer I told you about. Uh, she lives near, near me and I knew that she was going to be a vendor at the salon, so I asked her if she would be kind enough to... Um, uh, take me on the journey and uh, she did and she, it was so very nice of her yeah there's not a lot of events in my area um, and also and it's the rest of France is not easily accessible um, I don't really like going to Paris and the other yarn shows um, they're not easily accessible by train and I, like I have the driver's license but I don't have a car so that's like pointless um, so when I saw that the woolen music was happening, I really wanted to go, and I um so I took my <laughs> took the the plunge and asked Deborah if she would uh, take me with her, and yeah, that I really don't like asking for help or favors. I feel really embarrassed. I really don't want to bother people, and there's this thing that if you ask, like if I were to ask someone. For, for this and like they would be embarrassed to say no and I know this and so it's yeah Deborah I know that if I'm a pain and she hates me she will say so she will tell me no <laughs> I know that she will uh, and I really appreciate that so um, that's why I I had the courage to ask her because she, I knew that if it was no she would say no <laughs> so kindly she said yes <laughs> and so uh, we went on uh, together at the festival and I tried to help her a little bit at her stand uh, not to be such a, uh, a pain. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, it was really nice seeing uh, people, seeing different people um, and meeting uh, some of you. And yeah, it was really nice. Even like 
really a huge congratulations to the organizers which managed to make everything so so neat and so safe um like everyone had their masks on there was a, a sense in which you had to go um everyone was keeping their distance it was really really good so really really appreciate that and it was nice um everything went well um even the weather sort of agreed until the end but yeah it was really nice seeing people and i'm really thankful that i got to go and i'm really thankful that i got to get home alive because let me tell you we drove home on the saturday evening with deborah and it's like a two hours drive an hour and a half two hours the worst storm I've ever seen, not that I've ever seen, but that I have, a, I have ever experienced outside. We couldn't see anything on the road. It was such, <laughs> it was horrible. Um, it, it was raining, like the accumulation of rain and hail and everything. It was like a curtain, a, a white curtain in front of the road. And it was, we couldn't see, it was night. We couldn't see the lines of the road. We couldn't see the ditch on the side and there was no lights obviously and it's like oh god and <laughs> poor Deborah she couldn't see anything um she couldn't see like one meter past her car and I could sort of see a little bit better like I could see the line I could see sort of where we had to go and so basically I turned into a GPS right <laughs> I was like right you're in the center here you're in the right direction you now you have to turn slightly left now <laughs> you have to completely absurd but it was like I think it lasted 45 minutes or an hour or something until we we reached uh home and we were like it was so tensed um <laughs> but yeah we made it and once I got home it just dropped everything you know when you do something that you're so intensely focused on and so strained on it and then once the tension goes away you're exhausted so I spent my Sunday the day after just completely, <laughs> completely dead because of that. But um, yeah, we made it, thankfully. Um, and yeah, um, we made it with a ton of yarn <laughs> because that's what happens. Um, so let me show you everything that I got. So the first thing that I got was some yarn from Natalie. So Natalie is our Natalie is um, by night dyes. So she's a Belgian dyer. She dyes yarn naturally. So um, I really like her work um, and I was really, really happy to see her again. Um, she's so sweet. She's like a sun ray. She does a lot. Well, normally she does a lot of um, yarn shows and not only in France, but in Belgium, in the Netherlands as well. So you can sort of see her around Central Europe. And um, if you ever have the chance to meet her, so it's by night dies again, um, I really recommend that you do because she's like, she, she is so, so nice and kind and absolutely a lovely uh, person. And her work is amazing. She's like really, really uh, passionate about what she does and her colors are incredible especially this new one so she posted an, on instagram a few days before the festival that she had this new color so uh, it's the lac dye and it's this gorgeous gorgeous red it's like a deep burgundy absolutely stunning i really really liked it and so i want to make the rosa parks sweater uh, by Jessica uh, Cassidge Knits, basically. She's a French designer. Her patterns are available in English as well. And she recently released the Rosa Parks sweater, which is a really beautiful lace sweater. And she um, she released that. I saw this and I was like, match made in heaven, <laughs> because I knew that uh, by night had this base, which is her Orion base, which is BFL Masson blend, and it has this little cute halo and everything. And so, this is what it's, this is going to become. And I have a little bit less than I have twenty five meters less than the recommended yardage for my size. 
meter reach for my size. So I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna make it work. <laughs> but um, absolutely beautiful color. Now, after that, I went to La Cécile, which is a French uh, dyer, which um, I have seen around a lot of times. Like she, <laughs> she's really a really well-known French. Why? Hello, hello. No, you don't want to. Okay. Well, now it's dark. Um, I have seen her around a few times, but I never made the jump to actually get some of her yarn. I really like her gradients. So she make gradient cakes in different sizes, and. I really wanted one, but I never kind of knew which one or what to do with it. But I thought, uh, hello again, I thought uh, this time was the opportunity to to try one. So I got this, which is a 200 gram uh, cake um, of the beetroot colorway. So it's actually two times, like it's two different cakes, but caked together basically so that it looks cool. Um, yeah. It goes from this forest green to this like purplish kind of color. I'm thinking shawl. I really like the gradient shawl with like lace and everything and it just goes smoothly. Um, so I think this is what this will become. But um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see later. Never. <laughs> I'm not going to show you everything that I bought because some of them I'm going to use soon soon <laughs> like for me february is soon so you know that's like yeah um but yeah so next up i got some yarn from Céline, which is another french dyer uh c len c lens c yarns um which i've never seen um well i knew of her brand but i've never uh, gotten any and basically, I got these two because um, while we were making the mystery knit along for the Page of Wands uh, cowl, someone knitted it with, as a main color, a deep navy blue, as a contrast color, a light, uh, this one, a light, a light blue, and as a little touch of second contrast color, a golden mustard. And so my idea is to make a I wanted a color work project, probably a sweater with these colors. So I got these two from Céline. They're two different bases because I'm an idiot, but uh, it's okay because one is merino, one is merino nylon, same thing. Um, this is azurin and this is um, taba, so tobacco. And um, yeah, they're really pretty, really well nuanced colors. And basically they're gonna go with these. So these are the first skeins that I got from Les Petites Potions from Deborah. So as we were setting up her booth and I was sort of trying to um, arrange the yarns, I saw these like, and I, I took them from the bags and I was going to put them on the on the shelves and I was like, mm, no, you're mine. <laughs> um, and yeah, this is her crepuscular colorway which is a gorgeous blue and you see what I mean when I say that uh, she's really good at rich deep colors really really pretty this is her 85% merino 15% nylon so basically I'm gonna have all the different varieties of merino nylon in this but um yeah so that is the plan make a sweater like this I think it's gonna look really good. Um, so yeah, these are some of my purchases. And then, and then obviously when you're with at a yarn booth for a whole day, some of the yarn starts speaking to you. <laughs> so yeah, um, it was very good. I did all of this, which was planned towards the end. And then at the end of the day, I just took all of this and I told Deborah, here, um, taking this. <laughs> so, yeah. 
that's the problem. Like next time I'm gonna go at the booth of some of someone whose work I like less. <laughs> but, but the thing is with, with Le Petit Potion, I really like like 98% of what she does, like if not everything. Um, yeah, I think I have an attraction or a purpose for any sort of colors or base that she has. So, and this, <laughs> whoa. So it's not as blue in real life, it's more of a green. It's called Anteal and it's in her BFL base and it's like a deep teal green. It's more green than it shows here, uh, basically. Um, I don't know, like, it's gonna be, Im it's gonna be impossible to photograph, oh my god. But yeah, I just, these three skeins, they were there all day, no one took them. They made me sad, so I took them, because it's an absolutely stunning, I wish you could see the right color, it's like, imagine a green filter on this, and it's like so, so beautiful. And so it's a pure BFL, I have no idea what this will become. I kind of want to make, um, you know, you can, you're you seeing a lot of sweaters now that have embroidery flowers on them. Uh, I saw quite a few designs like this and I really want to make one. I'm looking for the perfect one. And yeah, if not, I'll probably make something textured because it's absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And then the, la the last sweater quantity I got is this one and so this is one of her non-superwash base because yes Deborah also has non-superwash yarns see what I told you is like she has the superwash she has the non-superwash she has everything um and this is her original base so basically it's 100% non-superwash highland wool but it's a really soft wool again it's much softer than any other highland wool I've touched it's like it looks like non-superwash merino to me. It's like really, really soft. And it's a two-ply yarn. And basically in some places you have a black ply. And it's really, really interesting. So it's fingering weight, but it blooms a lot. So you can knit it at a decay or sport weight gauge. And it, um, it looks very different depending on the color it's dyed it with. So if you look at it in darker colors, it's like really subtle heathered effect. Someone knitted the Tarayuela cardigan, which is a design that I made recently, in the deep blue in this base, and it's stunning. And when it's in lighter colors like this, it's really, really cool. And so my idea is to make a sweater combining these. So I don't know if it's gonna be proper color work yet or... Um, or something else like textured or some sort of way of making a sweater like this <laughs> I don't know what but I just really like this base yeah so that's the idea for this and that is all <laughs> that's enough <laughs> so yeah that's all the yarn that I got and um, I just thought I'd show you for one, just to showcase some of the lovely makers we have here in France. If any of them takes your fancy, if you need some yarn for a project, maybe you can uh, find something you like. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna finish with a little uh, Patreon talk. So if you don't know, I have a Patreon page where you can support me if you like. Uh, basically, it's another way for you to buy patterns. So there are three different levels. And for the 5 and 10 euros level, you get one or two patterns per month of your choice. Any of my designs um, that is available for sale on my Ravelry store. Bonjour. What do you want? No, come here. Um... I... what am I saying? <laughs> I... Uh, purr, purr, purr. Don't you dare scratch me. I... Um, so I have a Patreon page and you can get a, a pattern per month if you like. 
but every month I also put a video on it where you can um, you can see <laughs> uh, that I uh, address a specific topic. So these are either vlogs about behind the scenes work or their technical discussions where I'm gonna take a subject um, and I'm gonna um, talk about it. Basically, it's either a technique, an eating technique, some yarn review or something. And so these videos are recorded in French, but I subtitle them in English. So um, that way you can still have access to them. And this month, the video is on uh, tension in color work. So if you, you're purring way too loud, I'm sure they can hear you. So, <laughs> so color work and tension and how to manage your tension in color work and uh, color dominance, especially how to deal with color dominance, um, what it means, what it entails and how you can um, handle it in a really smooth and easy brainless way. Um, so that is the theme for this month on Patreon. When you join Patreon, you have access to all the back catalogue. Um, so you can view all the past videos as long as you're there. And the goal with Patreon is really to be flexible. So you just come and go. You have several creators on Patreon that you can support. So it's really interesting to just um, support whoever you can, whenever you can. So uh, don't hesitate to um, to switch creators. Um, now you can pay in euros and in pounds sterling on Patreon, as well as US dollars, obviously. So um, that is really good because you don't have to pay transaction, transaction fees anymore. So that's really, really neat. Um, and yeah, that's it, I think, for the little Patreon chat. It's a huge support for me, people who choose to be on Patreon. Um, the main, like, uh, everything is both in French and English. So you just have to scroll down to view the English versions of the post every time. Um, so yeah, don't uh, feel like it's just in French, just because the top layer is in French, just uh, the English is always there, don't worry. Um, but yeah, it doesn't look really happy. Why? Uh, is my petting scale not on point? Is there something wrong? I'm really afraid that he's going to, like, he, he's in the mood and sometimes he bites. He does not scratch, but he bites. He does warn me before, but like, as I'm talking to you, I might not catch the warning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you very soon, uh, probably around mid-October, with some new things to share with you. And, um, yeah. I, okay, that was a warning. <laughs> it's like one centimeter, it's okay. The next centimeter, it's not okay to pet. And it's like... If you're upset, just leave. See, <laughs> Kiki. So. He looks grumpy. Look at you. You look grumpy. Now go away. <laughs> yeah. I think I upset him. I don't want you to scratch my fresh tattoos. You're gonna. <laughs> okay. No, it's bath time. <laughs> All right, I see you in the next video.